arguments and debates over whether disclosure should happen, I'll just be here. You know, there's your disclosure. It's in your face. They're in your neighborhoods now. They're everywhere. The veil is lifted. It's the tribulation period. All of Satan's forces have been cast out of heaven onto the earth. You read Revelation chapter 12, where the dragon is cast down to the earth. Uh, and so what I, what I think that literally is going to happen is that he is literally going to be cast down to earth, and they are not going to be able to access uh, leaving earth with UFOs like they can now. I think that all these UFOs are going to be grounded, and they're all going to be grounded on earth. They're not going to be able to leave. So we're going to have to put up with them on earth, those people on earth. And they're going to be everywhere. And that's what I'm going to talk about Rick tonight with Rick because they have so many different agendas and so many different things that they're already doing in our midst. And, and he has one of the, probably one of the more fun sites on the net where you can go and look at all his pictures he gets. If anybody can find a funny and whacked out picture, it's Rick. And, and what he does is puts a lot of these Hollywood star movie pics on his sites and, and, and points out their ears or their eyes, whatever. It's really funny. And, and so we're going to talk about a lot of that tonight and how the traits of these alien hybrids on Earth and what they are and why they have pointed ears like Spock. And, and you know, I know one of the, the biggest ways of telling them apart is, is the eyes itself. They have that black, stareless, soulless look. Um, but he knows a lot of other different things you can look at as far as, as being able to tell uh, what's human, what's alien, what's hybrid. And one of the things that stuck out to me today as well, folks, is that is I'm looking through uh, some of Rick's material, because everybody knows I'm not the greatest interviewer in the world. In fact, I'm probably one of the worst, and I don't really hold interview-type shows. I hold conversation shows, because <laughs> I just like talking. I just like getting information out there, you know, and so we just go where the conversation leads, and that's the type of shows I do. You know, there's nothing real formal about my show. I'm just laid back. Uh, and like to, to teach people and get information out there. Uh, but one of the things that stuck out in my mind was was this passage in Numbers. Uh, you can look at uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 13, verses 32 to 33, how it talks about uh, uh, the, that these Nephilim, these hybrids that were living out of the land, were eating up the inhabitants. And, of course, Enoch says the same thing, that, that these giants were so huge, these hybrids, some were, and I, and I don't know how to translate it into terminology we would understand, 30 fathoms high. I mean, maybe Rick understands it. I know he knows a lot about the giants, more so than I do. Uh, but that's pretty tall. I, I, I thought I read somewhere an interpretation was 250 feet tall. And I'll have to get a confirmation on that. But these giants were huge. Now you know where Jack and the Beanstalk came from. Uh, but these things were huge. And one alone uh, would eat 500 cattle a day. So you can imagine how big this giant must be to eat 500 cows a day and then still run out of food. And what they did was they, they just ate up the earth. They ate up all the animals on the earth. There wasn't anything left. And when there was no animals left, they would start eating on humans. Okay, and, and I've been saying it for a long time that uh, the hybrids were cannibals, that they were cannibals. That they, they, I call them cannibals so it's easier to understand. Uh, than just saying something politically correct or technically correct, like carnivores or man-eaters, whatever. I think cannibals gives the right effect here. Uh, <laughs> they're cannibals. They eat people. And uh, and that's what they're going to do in the last days, because even though over generations of mutation, uh, the, the former mutation defect was giantism, and over mutations of the DNA over centuries, of course, we were able to negate the giantism defect, but these things are still hybrids. They're still hybrids. They're still half man, half alien, even though they look like us. And there's no more really obnoxious features that tell us apart. Uh, and, and so they look human, but they have, they're, they're half, half alien, half human. And the thing is, is just in the past, as they turned to cannibalism when there was no food, these same hybrids in our midst today, being born amongst us, have the same traits as, as, the, as their former generations did of hybrids. They will turn to cannibalism. And so that's something a lot of people are going to be dealing with in the tribulation period because I know we have famines coming. I always see that when the Antichrist arrives, it is, a, it is at a time of famine. I always see the term famine. I don't know if it's literal or symbolic, but unless it's, you know, my rule of thumb with interpreting a prophecy is that if it stands on its own, then it's literal. And if it doesn't, then it's symbolic. 
And then something like the word famine uh, could be, uh, actually it could be a physical or a spiritual. Uh, I'm sure at the time the Antichrist arrives, it's going to be both. It's going to be a time of physical famine and spiritual famine. Uh, because when he arrives, we're already well past into the age of the Laodicean church. Uh, that is a total, complete apostate church of the last days. And you can read about the, the Laodicean church in Revelation chapters 3 and 4, or it might be 2 and 3. It's one of the, it's the last church listed. You can start at Revelation 3. And it talks about the state, the spiritual condition that we're in at that time. And we're, and we're already headed there. I mean, we're, if we're, if we're not already there, I know a lot of people want to talk about how we're already in the trumpet judgments, and they'll go on and on about how the trumpets are blowing and we're in judgment. And no, we're not even halfway through the seals yet, folks. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, I like, you know, some of these prophetic boards and these false prophecies just go on and on about how the trumpets are blowing and blah, 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 and whatever, you know. We're not even halfway through the seals yet. Uh, when the sixth seal comes, people are going to know it. They're going to feel it. They're going to see it. They're going to be trying to live through it. Uh, because it's a huge shaking on the earth. It's, it's a huge physical, it's an earthquake. Uh, it can also be an economic crash, as in being Wall Street, uh, total economic crash here in Babylon. Or it can be a literal huge earthquake um, that will split this country in half. may even affect the entire world. I don't, I'm not, I'm not real sure if it affects, affects the entire world. I know it will Israel. And of course the, the land of Israel itself, as opposed to the people of Israel, uh, you know, America today has more Israelites in it than the nation of Israel. You know, Israel today is dominated, with, the land of Israel today is dominated with Edomite Jews. With uh, You read in Revelation, I think it's 3-5, of Satan's seat, Satan's synagogue. Uh, they claim they're real Jews and they're not. That's what you're looking at today with Jerusalem and Zionism. They're not real Jews. They're fake blood Jews. They're not real bloodline Jews. And we do have a remnant of real bloodline Jews in Israel and Jerusalem, and they're the ones who will be protected if they get to Petra uh, during the second half of the tribulation period. Lord's provided a safe haven for them uh, to flee the country and get to Petra. Uh, but other than that remnant over there right now, that Israel bloodline Israelite, there's, uh, most of the people of Israel today are located in the United States. We have all 12 tribes here, and I'm not just talking about one dark-skinned race, Jewish race, if you look at all the Aryan nations today, they are tribes of Israel. And I'm not talking about the church replacing Israel. I, I, I don't even like that aspect of, of getting into uh, you know, dogmatics about that because the church didn't replace Israel. What I'm talking about right now is the people itself, the tribes of Israel. You know, anyone, anyone who follows the Lord's commandments is his. And, and so, you know, the, the disciples talked about who was a Jew. And the Lord says, anyone who follows my commandments. You know, it has nothing to do with bloodline and skin line as far as, as going with uh, who the Lord considers as, as his. You know, and that's another dogmatic thing that the churches get all wrapped up to, up to in a box because they have this 30-second salvation prayer analogy to where you can say this 30-second salvation prayer and all of a sudden your name is written in the book of life and, and all of a sudden you have eternal life in heaven with him. And that's not necessarily true, folks. You can't say a prayer for 30 seconds and expect your name's written in the Lamb Book of Life, and that's all you ever have to do. I mean, the Lord said, the Lord never even said a word about any kind of prayer, you know, in the New Testament to receive salvation. If you wanted salvation and redemption, what did he say? Follow my commandments. Follow my commandments. And how many people are following his commandments today? How many are honoring the Sabbath? And then you get into, well, the Sabbath was changed to Sunday, and, you, you know, no, it wasn't. Sabbath wasn't changed to Sunday. And you can look at most of the, the doctrinal errors the churches are sitting in today, and 95% of them are based on Pauline doctrines. Not Jesus, what he said, not what the 12 uh, disciples and apostles said, but what Paul came in his own name saying. 